Welcome to the Starry-Eyed Podcast. My name is Brendan. And I'm Jen. On this show, we chat about all things Williams Syndrome. The ups and downs and what it's like living with. And being a parent to someone with. Williams Syndrome. We're excited to share our community with you. Thanks for being here. does indeed um, people who don't have their poop in a group yeah i don't no that's all right that's okay. right you guys, yeah. you guys had to podcast without me today we did and you missed out on a pretty tremendous uh guest sophia uh is she, she's just I she's so the, funny but she's so like straightforward yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, the really word spitfire cool. is what keeps coming to my brain yeah. and that's a little bit of a cliche yeah. but she really is i mean there were points where we all three of us were almost crying there were points yeah. where all three of us were just laughing um, it was so good yeah uh, she's yeah she's she's so great and then um perfect i think to help us kind of kick off awareness month so yeah. i yeah. am excited to listen to it you guys um sophia was at camp last year yes. and which I didn't get to tell her, Sophia, I'm sorry, but like every day I would watch her at mealtime and she would get a bowl of cr- croutons. That is all she would eat is a b- giant bowl of croutons. And I was like, that is impressive. Like you are really committed to croutons. Um, and I think somebody gave her at the end of camp, like a going away bag of croutons. So <laughs> I just right. feel like that yep. encapsulates like her personality. Like I'm going to just eat a bag of croutons and there's nothing you guys can do about it. We exactly. say this with the highest amount of uh, of praise, and this is the highest compliment we could possibly give. She's a bag of croutons. She's a bag of. You are we a bag should, of croutons. We should then, all. We should all aspire to be bags of croutons. Yes, yeah. Sophia. Thank you for helping us kick off Awareness Month. Yep. Yes, thank you so much. And then, of course, we have Denise Callen, who uh, is my colleague here at the WSA. She's the director of walks. She is, uh, in addition to just being one of my favorite people, she's just so tremendous. Did you, you know, he, okay, so as I'm watching you guys interview her, I don't know if this will make the final edit or not. As I'm watching you guys edit her, all I could do is just look and just see how clean and organized her desk area was. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my God, she is just so on top of things. Yeah. Yes. Man. She is really organized. I could tell that from meeting with her. Um, and I am excited. I'm excited for everybody else to meet her because sometimes we have people behind the scenes that yeah. you didn't even know probably existed. And she's one of them. And she is just knocking it out of the park with all the work that she's doing. Walks are really important to our community. And yeah. I think she's helping set us like up for success for like the next wave of of our journey as a community. So thank you, Denise. You are very organized, and you are also a bag of croutons. You are yeah. a bag of croutons. Crouton, like crouton. What would what would what would the sign be for croutons? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Croutons. But they're both all that and a bag of croutons, okay? All that and a bag of croutons. All right. That should be our that should be our you know how sometimes when like you rate movies, it's like we give you two whatevers. Yep. We'll say you are five croutons. You're yeah. Five, yeah, we'll give you five croutons. Now, Brendan, if you could make a background where it was like raining croutons. Oh, that would be a over. There's something that looks like a crouton. Maybe this. Yes. Uh, yes. Boom. Then I can do floating croutons. Oh my gosh. God, I hope this makes the cut. <laughs> well, it will now. Uh, all right. Well, let's get to the show. Let's get uh, let's get up going. Yes. Yes. Whoever raises the most money is gonna get flying croutons. Well, that that'll be what we compete for. We compete for a bag or a box of gourmet croutons. May That's the, best the wager. Crouton win. That's the wager. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Enjoy the podcast, everybody. Happy Awareness yes. Month. Okay. Yes. Bye. Oh, you guys are awesome. Hello, Sophia. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. For those who don't know who you are, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and 
tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone, for those watching. My name is Sophia Napoli, and I live in the wonderful state of Virginia in Fairfax. And I'm currently in college, and I live with my two awesome parents, two awesome sisters, and three awesome cats. So that's a little bit about me. And before we go anywhere else, if you want to get a snack or get a drink for those watching, I suggest you do that right now before we get any further with this. So get your drinks, get your snacks, and yeah, just go and do that right now. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That's that awesome. Buckle up, people. Get your pop. Buckle, buckle up. up. Strap yeah. in. Sit down. Here we're we getting get in the it. car and we're driving. It That's is what the heck we're doing. Old time. We are not looking back. Uh, nope. No, Sophia, we're we're super happy to have you on here. So let's just get right into it. It's we're coming up on um on William Syndrome Awareness Month. Can you tell us a little bit about why is uh why it's why is it important to educate people and to talk about William Syndrome? Why why do you think it's important to get that word out there? I think the reason why is because when we talk about William Syndrome, as you and Brendan both know, it's a rare condition right? It's not well known as some of the other disabilities and syndromes that are out there. I believe that it is super important for my friends to know about this, for my um, uncles and aunts to know about this, for my family to know about this. I think that it's really important to like, just talk about it. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about your story? Like not just when you were diagnosed, but when you sort of started to understand your Williams syndrome and how it made you you and and how that that all went so my parents when I was um old enough they told me that I had Williams syndrome and I knew I had Williams syndrome but none of my friends knew I had it I tend to keep these things very personal um but when it comes to my friends and the people that I know I like to tell them I like to tell them that I have this disability because like you said it's part of who I am, but it's not really who I am completely. You know, I'm not just some person that's, I am an ordinary person, but at the same time, I have my own gifts to bring. I have my own abilities. I have my own strengths and I have my own, I have my own weaknesses. And yeah. as we go on in life, you know, there's a lot that needs to be understood. You know, when I was growing up, um, I didn't have many friends at the time. I didn't have a really big social life. But that's changed drastically. But again, I didn't know much about my syndrome, but my parents told me some of it. And I I just had to understand that I had a disability, but that didn't that doesn't change anything about me. You know, well, it's definitely a part of you, but it doesn't define who you exactly. are. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, it's one of it's one of the characteristics that makes you you. Okay, so you're in you're in uh you're in college now. How how um like how was your how were your high school years? Uh, uh, how how did that how did that go for you? And how has college uh, been going for you so far? You know, um, high school was kind of a complex um, four years, and um, I was dealing with a lot of different things. Um, I was I had a lot of um, friendship breakups. I had a lot of um, I had a lot of things that I was dealing with at the time, and. You know, college has taught me a lot about how to be independent, how to, you know, advocate for yourself and advocate for others who may not have a voice, right? It's extremely important to have friends. And Brenton, I think you understand this perfectly because you and I, we get each other. We understand yeah. each other. I have many friends in high school that I'm no longer in contact with. And I still have a few friends that I am in contact with, but you know, I think in college, everything changes. Everything just turns into a different dimension than than high school, than in middle school even. But I want people to understand that you're going, you're either going through, you're going to go through a walk in life and there's going to be obstacles in, in that life that are going to be a hurdle for you or might be a curveball, but do not let those things that are an obstacle let you down or kill you in that walk. Or let yeah. them tire you. I just think that it's important to be ourselves. I would say, honestly, like 
the Williams syndrome community is my chosen family. Some of the friends that I have in the Williams syndrome community, I've had for over 20 plus years and anybody else in my life has come and gone. You know, I, I only have like maybe two or three friends that I'm still in contact from high school. I was a loner in high school. So, you know, people would only become my friend when it was convenient for them and then just up and leave. I think that you make a good point, Brenton, about people who are not in the disabled community wanting to be friends because of convenience. I think, I think that's something that I tend to experience a lot of the times and I don't see it. I don't know it. I don't feel it. And, you know, that breaks my heart, you know, because when I see true friends, I see, I want to see trust. I want to see vulnerability when there needs to be vulnerability. Um, I see a lot of things, but when you make some, when you make a friend with someone with a disability, don't do it because of pity or because of convenience. Do it because you care about that friend. Do it because you understand that friend. But like you said, it happens in the Williamson community way too much. And I want, like, I always wondered why that is the case. Not everyone you know is your friend. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that with full on honesty. Not everyone you know is your friend. Some of them will become your friend and some of them will not become your friend. But the only way, and I'm saying this in full on seriousness, seriousness, because this is a sensitive topic and we're going on a bumpy road right now in the car. Don't overthink your friendships because they're either going to do you good or they're going to do you bad. You know, I try to not let my disability get in the way of me making new friends. And I think that's a really important thing um, because you're like, it feels as though you're like an alien in a way. You feel different. You feel like you don't belong in a group or you don't belong um, with certain people. And that's how I feel most of the time when I'm around people. You know, I I don't feel like I myself. I don't feel like I just get like, like, am I in the right place? Am I with the right people at the right time? Am I like, you know, it is so hard to fit in sometimes. And Brendan, I know you know this. I know you feel the same way as I do. But, you know, it's important to express yourself and feel the way you feel. Because I don't want my disability to overshadow my uniqueness. I don't want my disability to take away all the things that make me who I am, you know, because I get bullied a lot in school. I get picked on a lot in school. I deal with all these things. But when it comes to my personal experience, it's not about people understanding your disability, but it's about people understanding you as a whole, as a person, as, as you are. I think we all um, go through a phase where we're like, I'm just not myself today. I don't feel like myself. I don't feel as though I'm able to be myself around these people. And I'm getting teary eyed because this is really sensitive. But when you go out there and you put yourself out there, that's difficult because yeah. you don't know how people will react. You don't know if people will be like, Sophia, come over here. We want to talk to you. Or they'll just make you feel invisible. I know I have friends that care about me. I know I have friends that definitely want to be my friend. And, you know, I like those people. But when you hang out with people that truly love you, that truly understand you, you feel less alone. And, you know, that's the hard part for me. I feel I tend to get really lonely sometimes. And that's, that's my weakness is loneliness. You know, I... I don't like feeling alone. I don't like being alone. It's a hard thing. But yeah, that's how I feel. You know, one of the one of the best ways to be an advocate for Williams syndrome is just being yourself. So so what are some of the other things that 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 bring you joy that that you love to do? Uh definitely laugh. I love a good laugh. I love a good uh SNL moment. I love a good, you know, play with the cats moment. But I also love to talk about my feelings. You know, I I hate hiding my feelings from people. I'm desperate to talk about my feelings. Um, but I just love going on the swings. I love going to the pool. I love going to sports games. I love to just be around people in general. 
there's so much in the world that can bring us joy that we can't find that joy until we seek it. You know, you know, it's a lot like, it's all like going on a treasure hunt. You know, you find the treasure, you get the gold, you get whatever's in there. And it makes you feel happy that you completed that conquest. But, you know, joy doesn't come from what's outside of you. It comes within you. Yeah. And, you know, it takes a long, long time to find that joy. I think what brings me the most joy is just being around people that care and love me. So that's yeah. my joy. It's uh, That's you know, very important. You, I think that one of the things that I forgot to say, and I want to say this right now, it's not only important for people with Williams syndrome to advocate, but it's important for parents, teachers, aunts and uncles, friends of that person that has Williams syndrome. They need to advocate for their child as well. It's not because I don't have a voice, but because there's backup in my own voice. There's another level voice in there that is much more... Uh, that can bring you back up, that can bring you a whole bunch of power. I think that there needs to be more advocacy from other people, not just from us. You know, this is a very important month to do something kind for someone with Wayne syndrome. And yeah. I say that with full on seriousness. If you have a friend that has Wayne syndrome, if you have a um, uh, cousin, uh, just be, just do something kind for them. Surprise them at their house, go out to lunch with them, uh, bring them something to eat. Just, do something kind for them during that awareness month because that's what's going to bring them joy and that's what's going to bring you joy. It's filling your cup and filling their cup at the same time. Love it. What what's uh what's coming up for you, Sophia? What well, like what's uh, do you have any fun summer plans? Any 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 cool things going on in your in your world? I'm going bowling tomorrow, so I'm Yay. looking forward to that. But I am mostly looking forward to just having fun during my awareness month. I'm just looking forward to seeing what other people do. And to my friends and family listening, if you know me well enough, you know that I love a good hangout. So if you want to get together during this awareness month, I'm all in for that. Okay. I love a good hangout, love a good conversation. So just reach out to me. I'm available. But yeah, just, you know, I love going on the swings. I love doing all these things. And those things are those things I'm looking forward to because that brings me the most joy and comfort. Mm -hmm. So just doing things that you love is what's going to bring you the most joy in life. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Are you going to the uh, convention? No, I wish I could. Are you going? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm on the board. So the board is obligated, has an obligation. And I'm, you know, we're going live with the podcast. So I, I, I have to be there. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, see, I, Brendan has no choice. I have no choice in it. <laughs> okay, it's okay. I don't mind. It's all good. Again. We we it's go. We, put them, we just put them in a in a sack and we carry them <laughs> down to convince. Y'all are funny as hell. Y'all are funny as hell. And also, do not forget about the Williams syndrome walks. Oh, oh yeah. nope. In fact, nope. if you live in my area, this is a PSA to all people in Virginia. There is a Williams syndrome walk in Fredericksburg. May 18th, May 18th at the YMCA place in Fredericksburg. So if you want more info, contact me after you listen to this podcast. <laughs> and I will also say, I will put it you know, here. I'm going to do this. I'll, I'll put it like it'll go over into Brendan's side here and, and it'll just go to kind of go across the screen here. Uh, Williams hyphen syndrome dot org slash events that's when you could where you can find all yeah. information on walks and stuff sophia this has been an absolute treat uh it's been it's so great oh, to oh. see you again um and so great to talk to you uh i just can't say enough about how um how happy i am to 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 know you and uh to have you on this show and to hear you talk with such wonderful passion it's just the best oh so i good. i I'm a passionate person that loves to just go all out, you know, and, you know, I, I'm going to curse for a second, but for those listening, make sure that there's a bleep in there. I don't give a bleep about not having fun. Okay. (laughs) I love having fun with doing crazy things. Like, love it. Go off, sis. Go off. Not having fun. I give a about having fun okay <laughs> yes there it is that's our first swear that's our first <laughs> podcast swear i'm keeping it in i will bleep it but i'm keeping it in 
Okay. Can, I, can I come back, please? Because I love you guys. Yeah, oh, we course. love you too. We would love to and, have and, you back on and, at any point and any time. So. And let me tell you, Jen is going to be kicking herself that she oh. doesn't here to get to get to chat with you. So she's going to demand to have you back on sometime oh, yeah. so, she, so yeah. she can get to hang out with you. This has just been an absolute treat. Woo. Bye, guys. It was so good seeing you guys. And thanks to oh, all my friends and family too. for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And remember, before watching this interview, you better get a snack and a drink. And buckle up, Buttercup. That's the, <laughs> that's the promo the right there. Up. We're going yeah. on a ride. Buckle up. We're going on a ride. Have your drinks. Have your snacks. Make sure you go to the bathroom first. We <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> Can't forget that. Uh, go number one. Go number two. Go number yeah. three. Whatever works. Whatever number you need. Whatever you need to expel from your body, <laughs> do it because we're going. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going we're on gonna... the Sophia Cadillac. That's yeah. what we're gonna do. Uh, yeah, we're yeah. convoy. The Sophia convoy. We're all just lining yeah. up with Sophia, and we're just going. Awesome. Well, hello, Denise. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well. Um, so for those who don't know who you are, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, tell everyone a bit how you're involved in the WSA and what you do? Sure. I'm Denise Callen, and I'm the director of WALKS. I live in Reno, Nevada, so I am a West Coast representing out here. And I, um, I've been here almost a year. I started uh, as a contractor last April and officially came on board as a full-time employee in May. And Lacey was the reason I was aware of this organization. We have known each other since seventh grade. So it was really awesome when she said, hey, we're looking for someone and I think your experience would be great here. So um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to be on board and helping to drive our organization forward. And I do have a connection with Williams and my family. My cousin, Gail, um, had Williams and she was fantastic, really fun lady. She was uh, born in 1947 and she was diagnosed with Williams long before there was any kind of uh, genetic testing. Uh, she was diagnosed based on her heart condition and her facial features. So mm. um, yeah, back a long, long time ago, but she lived a very rich, full life. And she graduated with her degree in music from Chico State. And uh, we were lucky to have her as long as we did. So were you were you around her growing up? Um, whenever we so all, my family, um, my so we would go and visit and um my my grandma and her mom were sisters and oh. so we got to you know see her anytime we went over to visit my great grandma or visit you know the cousins because there's lots of them that live there so that was how um how we got to spend time with her she was an amazing piano player and we all um there's a bunch of us that share the same middle name oh really mm -hmm. like a family middle name it's yeah. So she was Gail Elizabeth. I'm Denise Elizabeth. And there's a bunch of other Elizabeth middle names in there. So we're all all hooked together. <laughs> so you were saying that Lacey, you were friends with Lacey since seventh grade. And for those who are listening, Lacey is also a member of our staff at the WSA. Um, but did so you knew about technically you knew about William syndrome before Lacey because you had this cousin. Um, I'd be interested to hear like, yeah, when she Lacey approached you about this were you like hey that's a weird connection because I... yeah it was um and I actually didn't make the connection um right away um because we never we never talked about it um you know when Gail was around it was not a, a big topic of conversation everyone you know understood that she had some heart conditions and some other issues but it wasn't our focus our focus was on on her or spending time with her if she was there and uh so when Lacey and I started talking and uh she's like I think you'd be really a really good fit for our team and it was when I started talking to family members saying hey you know I've got this opportunity that they reminded me and they're like oh you've got a family connection to here too. And I was like, that's fantastic. I absolutely love that. Um, I think it, the organization um, probably would have been a really big help in those early days. But I mean, in 1947, that wasn't, WSA didn't exist yet. Oh. Yeah. 
Well, we, we've interviewed a couple of people too that are kind of on that earlier side of Williams syndrome movement. And it's so fascinating to hear them talk about how they were or weren't diagnosed. And, and I mean, as a parent of somebody with Williams syndrome, I was like, I need to know, right? So the way that we found out, I cannot imagine being like, well, there's no way to know for sure. But we think just based on this, uh, it's it like blows my mind, because now we're in a day and age where things are so immediate. And, um, things can be so like specific that I, I have a lot of respect and a lot of like fascination for like how diagnosing an individual with a disability looked in the, the olden days, the 19th. Yes. <laughs> it was olden days. Yes. And it's, I mean, it, I am so grateful having a son that has, um, he was a preemie, he has developmental delays and some other issues. Um, having access to resources through organizations like the WSA, I mean, even just being able to Google things it, and being able to research and get information, I can't imagine living at a time when that wasn't an option. And we have... Um, we have families that I talk to uh, through either the family support network or in the process of doing walks who mention they're like, I choose. And it's so life changing for them to just have someone close and that I can only imagine um, Chico's a small, you know, small farming town. They grow a lot of almonds there. And I can't imagine how isolating that must have felt um, for a farm family to you know, find out this diagnosis for their daughter and, you know, being able to move forward and to give her the opportunity to explore her gifts because she was. And so they did find ways for her to be able to do that. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. And I love, I am sort of a believer in like fetish type of things. And so, you know, you having a history with Williams syndrome, you know, at least like lightly, cause that's not very common. Yeah. Um, and then to come full circle working for the WSA, like it's, it's feels very like serendipitous to some degree. And now you're doing walks. So now we're doing walks. walks, what does that mean? So I am the first point of contact for anyone that wants to plan a walk or people who have questions about walks. I am, uh, I love to talk to people. I love to um, have conversations about how we can work together to fundraise for the WSA, because without the fundraising dollars that we make from walks, our organization would really struggle. And the goal of our walks is not only to raise awareness and to bring families together, but it is to raise those vital funds that we need in order to function. So I'm here to walk everyone through the process step by step. I know we got to do that the other day, kind of talk about the process, and some of the, um, the tools that we have available, for everyone, we have a walk planning um, worksheet that we can go through that has probably more information than anybody ever needs, but I am the type of person that I like to give more info. I would rather leave you with more information. You're like, oh, I don't need that. Nope, I don't need that. Then leave someone wondering or having a drastic question that they're like, I don't think I can handle this because I don't know. I am here to, to help the whole way through. So, and we have walks that are all they've run the gamut as far as uh, what they entail. So sure. we have walks that are a block long. We have walks that are significantly longer. We've had five Ks in the past. So really, we can we can customize it for the area, for the region, and that's one of the things that I love about my job is no two days are alike because all the walks and all the walk tiers have their own unique personality that they bring to the scene. Yeah, absolutely meet you like a week ago um, in our area. I'm in Colorado for those listening. And we're in a season where the um, wonderful person who has coordinated the walk for like forever in a day is like in a position not to now do that. She needs to transition some of those responsibilities over so that she's not like the only person coordinating the walk. And so Bill, um, who is our board um is he was he president of our board? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, for the WFA. He's in Colorado, so he and I, along with this, um, shout out to Lisa, um, are coordinating this walk. And so I got to meet you for the first time, and I was so I was like, no idea what a walk entails. And I thought you did a great. You're very organized, so kudos. Thank you. Um, but you have a breadth of resources for people. It's very helpful. So for those folks um, in areas that do have walks, right? Like if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's, right. uh, 
and keep doing what you're doing. But this new resource specifically, Denise, that I think you are providing is great for like first time people like myself. I try to provide as many resources as I possibly can. We have templates for almost everything. We have guides on how to approach sponsors. I know that's a big one that's a little bit scary for people. And so we have a full written guide and then I'm happy to walk through um, some of our templates that we have, like our sponsorship letter templates. And I'm happy to role play too. We have a walk chair that was a little bit nervous about talking to sponsors. And so we set up a Zoom meeting and we practiced. And I used to own a business. I used to run a paint your own pottery studio in Sparks for 13 years. And so I have been on the receiving end of a lot of those requests. And so it gives me kind of a unique perspective of being able to coach someone on how to talk to a sponsor, how to go in and talk to a business owner. And my philosophy is always, if you don't ask, the answer is no. And I am willing to go out there and be like, put myself out there and hopefully the walk chairs are too. If we ask, the answer might be yes. And that's just a fantastic feeling. I mean, it's not only great for our organization, but I know that when I go out and I'm fundraising and I'm looking for donations, when I get those, it's like, yes, it's just such a good feeling. So I want to kind of impart that uh, spirit to our walk chairs so that they feel powered, they feel comfortable, uh, that they can go out and make those requests and that it's not as scary as what it's, you know, it might seem. <laughs> It seems like, yeah. And I know we're, we're embarking on Will William syndrome awareness month, which is yes. May, um, which is a great time for awareness activities of all kinds in our community. But I mean, how important are walks to the WSA? Like without the walk chairs, without these fundraising opportunities, the WSA would, would struggle or eventually cease to be. If that was really something that we took a look at at the end of last year, at the end of walk season, we really took a deep dive into the financials to see what was working, what wasn't working, ticket prices, and yeah. the things that we offer, like t-shirts, um, came under that scrutiny. And I think that it was really, it changes hard. And I know that the WSA has had a lot of change in the last couple of years. Um, I'm really grateful for the grace that everyone is showing us as a staff. And we, we've we been in, you know, kind of behind the scenes talking about this since October. How do we make walks make the biggest impact on our organization as a whole, both for awareness and for fundraising, because ultimately these events are, they're kind of all of those things together. They are, they're fundraisers, but they raise awareness and tell people in our communities, you know, what Williams syndrome is, what the WSA is and what we do and what we provide, the resources that we have for our families. And they're also connection events because I think it's invaluable of being able to meet those people who can understand exactly what you're going through. Just knowing that someone out there gets it and that there's someone close to you that if you needed to to reach out to, I think those are fantastic. What are the other changes that you've made good or bad or indifferent? Sure. So like I mentioned, we made big changes to t-shirts this year. And yeah. when we looked at the financials last year, some of our walks, 50% of the fundraising dollars that they were bringing in was going to t-shirts and shipping. Wow. And as a steward of those donor dollars, I just can't in good conscience be okay with that. Because if I, I mean, I run the, the family support network group for the parents with kids under four. And the last thing that I would ever want to do is have someone from that group or someone from another group come to us and say, Hey, I, I need help. I need resources. And I have to say, Oh, we can't do that because we don't have any money because we spend it on t-shirts. And so being able to provide things like IEP support, it's invaluable for our families. We researched a lot of other national organizations. Um, I think we looked at about six in total. Um, the two biggest ones that had an impact on our decision were the Buddy Walk and American Cancer Society. We kind of followed their lead on how they approach their t-shirts now, which is we, are, we would love to give you a free t-shirt. And the t-shirts this year are fantastic. And we've switched and now we're asking people to fundraise, not just right. purchase a ticket to the event. So when you fundraise, you sign up to be a walk fundraiser. When you raise $150, then we will ship you a t-shirt. Like yes. That. Yes. And I, and I don't know, I, but you can also buy a shirt, right? So if you 
Yes, you can. If you don't want to fundraise, or if you don't want a t-shirt specifically, we have our new WSA shop that has a ton of products in it. And we are adding new products all the time. Last week, we just added um, cell phone cases. So those are new and in the shop. And if you're not a t-shirt person, we have sweatshirts, we have polo shirts, we have tank tops, we have water bottles and luggage tags because everybody's got to get ready for convention coming up. So grab those yeah. luggage tags, you're ready to go. Uh, so it's nice to be able to offer the, those extended um, products as well that still fit into that awareness theme. The other nice thing that we, we um, realized in changing how we handle t-shirts in the past, we would have a wonderful supplier who would print our t-shirts and then store them in a warehouse for us. Right. And then people would, we would place orders based on our, the number of registrations that we had, but we had to cut those off like two weeks ahead of time in order to ship the t-shirts. And then our walk chairs would have to handle sometimes three or 400 t-shirts. So that's a lot of work in itself. But yes. the other thing that we're able to do now is we don't have to cut registration off early. So because our fundraiser technically for awareness shirts goes through December, you could sign up at the walk and fundraise and eventually you'll get your t-shirt. The other really amazing thing by not having to have a warehouse full of shirts sitting somewhere waiting for us is we are able to offer a wider variety of sizes than we have in the past. And I know that I, in talking with some walk chairs, their kiddos are little and the smallest we had was an extra small. And that was like a, a youth extra small, which was like a 4T. There's a lot of kids that that misses. And so by doing this new t-shirt program that we have, we're able to offer a newborn onesie to 24 month onesie. And then we also have um, t-shirts from three months all the way up to adult 3XL. So it gives us a much wider variety of sizes. And I like that we can include the little ones, you know, so that they get to wear their shirts now and not just save them until later because they look like a dress right now because they're so big. So yeah, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, I, um, I used to have a, my background is in logistics and I do some consulting, um, on a, in a very similar realm. And I would say just for everybody that knows, I mean, there is a huge cost in managing t-shirts like this. It's not very environmentally friendly. Everything that you do, storage, handling, all of that is a cost. And to your point, Denise, like when you're working in a nonprofit environment, we have to be very cautious with how we manage dollars and having um, so much of your fundraising dollars go the management of t-shirts really isn't fiscally responsible. And like I said, uh, aside from the environmental impact, so it sounds like this is going to be a great opportunity for us to be efficient, use some dollars in a different way, and get everybody size they need. They'll get it if they fundraise, they'll get it before the walk in many cases, yeah. right? Yeah, um, we we ship out every week. And okay. so as, um, as the I um, pull reports and then I order t-shirts every week. So, and I know that a lot of... Um, one thing that's important in my family, especially with my son, um, having sensory issues, being able to wash the t-shirt before he wears it, being able yeah. to have a tearaway tag that our shirts have now, um, those things are really important to him. And not having to change a kid's clothes in the middle of a park is, you know, makes everybody's life easier. So I'm excited about uh, being able to ship them directly to people. That way too, we know that you're getting the size that you want. And last year, you know, as hard as we worked to make sure that there was never an issue with t-shirts, we we had some issues. So we had um, our Kansas City t-shirts ended up in Canada. So, yeah. it, you know, stuff like that happened. And by doing it this way, uh, we are we are set up for success rather and being able to deal with things more quickly. We can pivot very fast as far as changing the t-shirts and stuff like that. So it does give us bigger opportunity to be flexible in case there are problems. Um, whereas last year it was really, it was really hard, but our vendor was fantastic. They worked so hard with us and we had walk chairs that went above and beyond, um, in Maryland, uh, our walk chair's mom offered to drive from Maryland to Georgia to pick up t-shirts when only half of the order arrived. So, I mean, they just, it's, I love working with people like that. I mean, how can you not, the people that are willing to just really Admit go it. out of their way to make it better. It's yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. 
Yeah, we talked to our walk chairs. We did um, a survey at the end of last year to kind of get the feedback from the people yep. that were on the front lines that were there, that were handling it. And they brought up a lot of really valid points for us that really helped to guide us when we were setting up the walk program for this year to make sure that we were headed in the right direction. Because obviously we want to make sh we want to make this as easy as possible for our walk chairs. And one of the things that we heard on repeat was T-shirts are hard. T-shirts are a challenge. They're a challenge for shipping when they arrive. You know, it was always last minute. And just the, like you said, the logistics of handling that was was really a challenge. So um, this year, you're not going to walk away without anything when you buy a ticket. So still buy a ticket for a walk because it's really important. It's not about getting the free T-shirt. It's about the ticket um, brings us together to raise awareness and to fundraise for the WSA. And so you'll be getting a sticker, a nice three by three inch sticker and for the WSA and a silicone bracelet. Um, yep. It's kind of like that. Yeah. I'm like, this is on my last legs, girl. Like this yep. is the last oh, one I have. We're about to get a new one. <laughs> I'm going to get a new one. And I'm so excited because I wear this every day for Got those thing. I like, have this silicone bracelet that I've had for like the million years tear in it and I'm like please oh. hold on yes <laughs> we're about to give you a new one and they're fun too they are white blue and green swirls with red writing so they're right. you know they are just right up our alley for being uh you know this cool blend of an organization so I think it's great yeah no I'm excited I'm very excited about those yeah so we have Melissa um, who is amazing and she is running our social media and she's a genius and T-shirt logistics have nothing on Melissa's job in coordinating yeah. all of the posts and stories and across different platforms of where we're posting everything. Because she's not only posting about walks, but she's posting, you know, awareness information, awareness month, um, weekend for Williams coming up. So there's all of these different um, events and information that she gets out there. And she just, yeah, she's got a system. She makes it great. Yeah. So you are, is that intentional to, to make sure everybody knows about all the events that are happening? We're trying to get events out there as much as we can. We want everybody to know that there's stuff going on in their area. And if there isn't, please become a walk chair. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we have our walk chairs posted on their regional pages so that we can reach out to people. I know in the past it, um, that previous staff would send out hard copy mailers, but like we were talking with t-shirts, the environmental impact of all of the shipping and paper, we made a commitment that we're going to help keep costs down, but also be environmentally conscious by not doing those hard copy mailers. So it's really important that we send out those, um, you know, the flyers and stuff by email and that we send it out on social media. And it's really important too, that if, you know, somebody in your area is like, hey, I, you know, I normally come to all the WSA stuff, but I didn't get that email. Make sure that you contact us so that we can get your account updated because we want to make sure that everybody's getting information for the events that are close to them. And we do have some events that are coming up that uh, you might want to travel for beyond convention. So that's exciting too. It is exciting. Well, and as a very busy mom right now, I can tell you, I appreciate all the different ways that you're communicating because I may see an email and then it like leaves my brain. So then if I see it later on social media, I'm like, oh yes, that I need to do. Um, well, is there other ways or things that you want to share with the community on how we can um, fundraise, how we can build awareness, any great, any like best practices you've seen based on the time you've been with us? Sure. So first of all, I think that it can be, People can be intimidated by us saying, hey, raise $150, get a free t-shirt. Again, we're trying to, to give resources out there to make it easy. And so we produced a fundraising guide on how to raise $500 in a week. Because if I tell someone, hey, go raise $500, it's really intimidating. But if I say, hey, go ask five friends for $15, that's that's a much easier ask. That's Starbucks. Yeah. Um so we want everyone to be successful. We're not trying to put a barrier in between this situation. So I think it also helps us to know who to talk to because I think that we can get insulated and we can focus just on people that, you know, may already know about the situation with Williams and certain people, you know, in, in a fundraiser's family. Yeah. And it's important for us to reach out beyond that because talking to everyone brings this into their consciousness. So like you said, you're a busy mom, you may not read the email, but if, you know, somebody pops into, you know, a pizza place and posts a flyer and you're like, oh, you know, I, 
I think I've heard about Williams syndrome. I really want to go to that walk because I'm, I want to learn more. I want to know more about it. Well, that right there just raised awareness and that took us dropping a flyer off at a business. Um, so it's not just about asking businesses for money. It's like, hey, can you support us by letting the community around us know? Because the more people that know about Williams, I think that the better for everyone. And I think that that will lead to further research opportunities. You never know, especially when talking with kids, you never know what kid is going to grow up to be a pioneer in the, the field of research for Williams. So I think that talking to anyone you can about it is always a plus. Um, and it doesn't always have to be in the context of fundraising, but reaching out to people so that too, they're not it's there's no stigma attached to it it's you know this is who we are these are the gifts that we have and we're going to work together as a community to make our lives better use the resources that we have to share that information yeah we have 18 walks yeah. in production right now and 13 pending so we are working to get them as many places as we can and later this summer we're going to open up an anytime anywhere walk so if you don't have one near you and you still want to fundraise for your t-shirt you want to you know just get out there go to your park and wear it take a walk around the neighborhood it's a great way to fundraise raise awareness and just have a good time together knowing that everybody here is working towards the same goals yeah, well, I'm excited that to have you. And like I said, I can't speak enough about, I haven't gotten into my stuff yet, but you have set me up for success. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know what has happened. Um, Brendan, have you raised your $150 yet for your shirt? Oh, not yet. Uh, I'll get there. Should I will we, get there. should the three of us on the podcast, maybe we should like, um, like see who gets there first. We can have like a little graphic and then, it can fill up every time. Yep. Just like my little fundraising thermometer there you go. with my goal on it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm exactly. working my way up. I update it once a month and it's it's good to see that ticking up so that I know for sure that we're we're making progress towards that goal. We can we can have a wager. Like somebody gets like whoever gets there first gets something cool. I don't know what that is, but I'll let yeah. you can figure something out. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, and thank you, Denise. Thank you for coming on and sharing oh, about sure. this. And if people want to get a hold of you, how do they do that? So if you're interested in hosting a walk, what I recommend is if you go to the main walk page on the website, the one that says Walk for Williams on there, it'll list every walk that we have coming up. If you're interested in becoming a walk chair, there's a link on there to the interest form and all the details. Um, take a read on that, fill out the interest form, and then I'll reach out to you. We can set up a Zoom meeting. We can set up a phone call. We can talk through uh, the different options that we have in the different areas. And if we have somebody that is interested, uh, right now we're trying to coordinate North Carolina, and we have four people that have expressed interest in that area. So we're trying to get them all connected together so that they can plan support that they they didn't even know that they had. And I'll also be at convention. So if anybody has questions and they're going to be at convention, I'm more than happy to, to talk one-on-one -on -one or in a group uh, about what it entails, what's going on with walks this year. I will be at the retail store most of the time. So you can come find me there. No, well, thank you. We appreciate you being on and all that you're doing. Um, and happy walk season, everyone. Yes. Yeah, happy walk season. Happy awareness season. Yeah. Awareness season. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been the Starry Eyed Podcast presented by the Williams Syndrome Association. The show is hosted by Jennifer Keaton and Brendan Lemieux and produced by me, Joel Listman. Theme song by Tommy Barbarella and Mariella Elm. Got a question for the show? Email us at podcast at Williams hyphen syndrome dot org or message us at the Starry Eyed Podcast page on Facebook. Video version of the podcast available on the Williams Syndrome Association channel on YouTube or on Facebook. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or comment on the video version and maybe it will be featured on a future episode. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Starry Eyed Podcast wherever you get your podcast delights. Yeah.